Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I am going to be demonstrating how we can perform polynomial regression in Excel. In my previous videos, I talked about simple linear regression, multiple regression and how we can transition from simple linear regression to multiple regression. If you haven't watched those, I strongly recommend you watch them. I leave a link in the description because they explain certain concepts which we will be using in this video like R square, adjusted R square and P values. If you already understand some of these concepts, then we can dive right into this video. So first we look at what is polynomial regression. Polynomial regression is nothing but a special case of multiple regression in Excel. So in, a, in, the, in the previous video, we had talked about how we modeled the relationship between miles per gallon and displacement. The miles per gallon is the y variable and we used to, uh, the displacement to predict the miles per gallon. So in that case, we had got this model. You could see the adjusted R square was 0.71. That means 71% of the variability in the miles per gallon could be explained by the displacement. So it was a good model. And we also saw that the P value of the displacement was uh, quite low, less than 0 0.005. That means it was a statistically sig significant predictor. And this is the, our model depicted by a straight line. Now our aim is to see can we improve on this linear regression model? Can we have a better fit instead of this line to the model? Can we introduce some non-linearity and improve the model? For that, we'll go to polynomial regression. So let us take a look at the simple linear regression model first. It is y is equal to ax plus b. This was your formula for the simple linear regression model, where a is the slope and b is the y-intercept. Now, if we have to go for polynomial regression, we would have to increase the order of x. So our equation would look like a x raised to the power 2 x squared plus b of x plus c. This helps you model more complexity into your model. And for the purpose of this, I am uh, using only one variable, but you can apply polynomial regression for multiple variables as well. If you would like to, uh, to see a video on that, do let me know. So let's take a look now and see how this could affect this model. So I will click here, I will go to trend line. And let me try to add a polynomial. So you can see this shows how the polynomial model would look like, how this polynomial model would fit the data. And without even doing any computation, we can see it looks like a better fit of the data, a better representation or a good fit of the data. But let us confirm this as well. So let us click here, click on insert, I'm going to add a new column. Let's name this column this underscore squared because I need the x squared square and I'm going to do click on this row and raise to the power of 2 and enter and you can see this is my square of each of the displacement. Now let us try to create the polynomial model as we did using the data analysis add it. Click on data analysis, click on regression and the y variable again the variable that we want to predict or the target variable and the variables that we are going to use to predict or the independent variables let's select as the x click on labels as true and we want to place this in this sheet only because so that we can compare and click on ok and now let us take a look so let us see as we talked about in multiple regression as we talked about polynomial regression is a special form of multiple regression so we have to look at adjusted r square not of at the r square because adjusted R square adds penalty for the extra variables included in the model. So you can see here, we look at the adjusted R square and it is at first glance 0 0.77 is better than 0 0.71. So we can see by adding this extra order, we increase the order of X, we have got a better fit model, okay, which is depicted here as well. And let us take a look at this. So significance S, this is less than 0 0.05 as we discussed in my previous video. And even the P values for disp squared and, and displacement, the x squared and the x are both statistically significant. So they are good predictors used to predict the y variable. So we can see this is a statistically significant model. And we can also go here and let us click on this and we can visualize this equation. Okay, click on this model with more options and let us say display equation on the chart. And you can see this is my model which we have got here also. Let's verify. So y is equal to, for the x squared, let's bring this down so we can see side by side. Let's bring this down. Okay. 
so you can see y is equal to 0.0001 x squared which can be seen here that is your coefficient for the x squared plus, minus 0 0.01053 again this for the x and 35 is the y intercept so this is your model you can use this model to make future predictions and it will be definitely better than your linear model however do be wary of that just because a model has a good fit doesn't mean it's a better model there's something called as bias and variance so a model may tend to overfit which will have a very low bias but the variance will be very high so in some cases even though it looks the fit is good a linear model may be a better su uh, suited for that case but that's a topic of discussion for another day i hope you enjoyed this video if you did like this video please leave a comment on what other videos you would want me to make on this topic and leave a like on my video and do not forget to subscribe to my channel for the latest of data analytics across different technologies thank you